Hi everyone, my name is Mariam. I'm a senior manager at Microsoft Teams. And today I'm going to be speaking about two key topics. One is day in life of a product manager. And second is how to switch to a PM role. Let me start with a quick intro about myself. My academic training is in electrical engineering and I have an MBA. Prior to my MBA at e Chicago Booth School, I worked as a lead integration engineer at Maxim Integrated Products. In my role at Maxim Integrated, I was responsible for two key things. One was leading teams in understanding the root cause of the semiconductor chip failures and implementing a fix for them. And second was on a very regular basis to present to senior executives within the company. That's what led me to spike my interest in the business side of things and led me to my MBA. During my MBA, it was a fantastic opportunity to learn about the different uh, opportunities available post MBA. I was really interested in strategy because that would help me think through as to how C-suite executives uh, make decisions and be able to advise to them. Given my background in technology, that's what led me to Microsoft in the strategy unit. A lot of my experience at Microsoft came back in the strategy team and it was a fantastic opportunity with a lot of impact in advising C-suite executives. But one of the things that I was missing was my interactions with engineering. And that's what led me back to the engineering org and as part of the product team. Let's get started. I think one of the things that can help us calibrate is in terms of how the day-to-day -day looks of a PM is based upon where in the PM uh, cycle one is really in. So let me share my perspective on the three different, like at an entry level, at the mid seniority level and senior leadership level as to what the responsibilities for each one of them look like. At the entry level, at a more junior PM role, one would be solving for a particular customer pain point. And there would also be a lot of focus in terms of execution, uh, making sure that the vision that has been given to them, that they execute flawlessly on them. The problems are more, um, more well-defined for them. As one basically progresses through in their particular career, uh, at mid seniority level, one defines the vision and strategy for a particular area that they are leading. Uh, many a times that involves leading cross org initiatives. Also, if someone is interested in the people management side of things, they're usually leading teams or mentoring junior PMs within their team. As one progresses further along and at a senior leadership level, at that point in time, one is determining what the key investments are going to be, what the strategy and vision for the entire org really is. There are many areas under them. The PM teams are way bigger. And also many a times it would entail leading projects, uh, charters, which are outside their area of direct authority. Let me share in my day to day as to what are the key partners that I interact with on a very regular basis. One is the first one is the customers. Uh, customers are the king. They are the ones whom we are building uh, the product for to solve their particular pain points. So having interaction with them is key. The next is what the user experience is going to be. And um, that's one works with design and user research on a very day-to-day -day basis. The next is engineering because one works with them to understand what is feasible versus not and making sure that the vision lands into reality. The last is, but equally importantly, is marketing. Whenever we are working towards releasing a particular uh, product or a set of features for our customers solving for those pain points, we need a very strong partnership with marketing to make sure that our customers know that we are working on this, on the problems that they have shared with us. It is coming and it gets the adequate visibility, the press releases that are needed. Next, let me share with you the different phases. And in my uh, view, it's a very cyclical process that one goes through uh, as this particular chart shows. So it starts with uh, generally building a feature backlog, which is a set list of features that have been requested by our customers. The next is basically like planning, prioritizing as to what we can build and why we should be building. Next is executing on that particular vision. And then uh, the moment that all PMs are waiting for, which is releasing the product Rev1, which we also call a lot of times MVP. Let me go into and give a deep dive into these different 
areas that I just spoke about, which shapes a lot of what my day to day looks like and who among these different partners that I shared about, am I interacting with more? That is also determined um, by the phase that I might be in. So let's start with the first one, which is building the feature backlog. That entails three steps. The first one is uh, you might wonder where all the requests are coming from. Um, so there are actually different avenues from which we can hear as to what our customers are asking for. The first one, which is also the most important one is the PM should have like a direct one-on-one -on -one connection with the customers, have regular interactions with them. Besides that, there are other avenues as well. For instance, depending upon the company one is in, there might be a customer PM role uh, who are fantastic allies in terms of understanding what some of our strategic customers or what the small medium businesses are asking for, what their pain points are. The next is there are many a times many online forums, tech communities in which our customers are actually going and sharing their input in terms of what pain points that they are seeing, what they would like us to solve for. And lastly, uh, also there are internal teams who, whom we are a key partner to and they need our help to land some of the vision that they have uh, for the charters that they are driving. So there are requests that come from that avenue as well. Once one has a good understanding, like in terms of all the different requests that one has in terms of what problems, pain point for our customers we need to be solving for, one of the things one needs to understand as a PM, I think is very critical is what we are trying to build and why we are trying to build it. And as far as there is basically um, one thing that this is something, yes, it would have a huge impact. One should start with like the PM, I think at a basic level, have the what and the why documented and also have basic set of like PM art or design mocks that we say from the PM perspective, have the wireframes ready. And then last piece is in terms of making sure as any PM can vouch for, there are actually many, many requests that come uh, one's way. So there needs to be a system to which one can actually track that. Uh, within Microsoft, there is a tool called ADO that we use, but across different companies, there could be very different tools that they are using. Let's jump into the next phase, which is planning. In the planning phase, the very critical step, the first step is prioritizing. Um, as a PM, one of the key skills is one should be able to ruthlessly prioritize. The question might come like, okay, how do we actually prioritize? Uh, how do we have a structure to that? So some of the things that I actually look for is uh, while I'm making my decision is in terms of understanding what is going to be the impact to uh, my customers through this. Second is also like uh, across the companies, there basically are certain areas that senior leadership is investing and in. there is executive alignment on that. So making sure that directionally I'm moving in that particular way is another input. The next one is looking at compete in terms of the publicly available information that they have, analyzing against that and seeing would this provide us an edge. And Equally importantly is understanding what the cost to build that particular feature or feature sets is going to be. Once you have all of this, there are different ways of quantifying. One particular way can be using a RICE score uh, in which some of these inputs can be provided and one can actually get a more mathematical number in terms of being able to, to prioritize that particular list. The next one is the key piece also in this phase is like, involving uh, full on like your design and user research team and having discussions with them, the PM art and the wireframes that we talked about just a little bit ago in phase one, come in very useful in this particular, um, in the planning phase when we are talking about, uh, when we are talking to design and user research in sharing about what the vision is, what we are trying to build, why we are trying to build it, and basically iterating on the initial set of design with respect to the entry points, the discoverability of it, the ease of use for it. Those are the key things, key discussion points that we have. Also in that particular discussion, one of the things that I think is, is super critical is rather than deciding necessarily on like one particular design, talk to your user research folks, design folks, and have explorations, have customer sessions, get input on that in terms of like run A-B test as to what is more preferred, have both qualitative and quantitative feedback on that in terms of what could be statistically more significant as a design choice. 
The next is having finalized specifications, what is also in some uh, companies might be called as the PRD document. In that, one needs to make sure that all the use case scenarios are documented along with all the edge cases. Uh, there is finalized designs that we have. And very, very importantly, as a PM, one needs to make sure one defines how we are going to measure success for what we are building and having those metrics documented from the get-go. Next is in terms of once we are shovel ready, uh, having funding discussions with our engineering managers. So there's an engineering manager counterpart that is uh, generally assigned to a particular area. So one would have a conversation with them and with them, along with them, there would basically be a couple of things that would come in discussion as to one, what is the cost going to be built for it? What are the engineering trade-offs uh, involved? How is performance going to be impacted? Making sure those metrics are looking really good and there's no no uh, negative impact to performance at all uh, in that regards. Um, what is also the dev resources that are available to us? What are the dependencies on the other partner teams, especially in cross-org initiatives? There are multiple dependencies across the different teams. We need to make sure we work alongside with those uh, PMs and engineering managers to make sure that it is funded and um, we can make sure that everyone has a buy-in on the vision that one is pitching for. And then, um, there are like some orgs can have this uh, a really fantastic idea, which is UX reviews. We have that within at Microsoft and uh, there is very senior leadership like at partner level, both from product and from design who are part of that committee and one presents uh, about, about their vision in a step by step or at any different phase like one can um, and seek input and iterate further on that. Once we have closed on what we want to be building, why we want to be building, what the design is, we go into the execution phase of it. During the execution phase, there is a lot of interaction that happens actually with the developers who are implementing the feature alongside with the engineering manager. Um, during this particular phase, um, there's also a lot of interaction with our customers again. Uh, that's customers is a constant theme across the board. And we run both qualitative and quantitative uh, feedback sessions with the customers. When I say qualitative, what I mean by that is that there would basically be, for instance, uh, the customers who are under NDA, uh, one can actually go and show them some of the initial design thinking, for instance, that one might have had, or what are you basically trying to build, showcase that, get that input. Um, the second would basically be once we have the code, some pieces of the code implemented that our customers uh, who are under NDA can actually go ahead and try that. We give them a set of instructions in terms of the different use cases that they should be testing for, providing us feedback. The other key thing also is ask for customers for open-ended feedback. Also ask for questions in terms of which might not just be like direct, like, okay, uh, do you like this feature? Do you not like this feature? But also in terms of like trying to assess how much time they spend at these different entry points, what that means for them them is it easy to find is it intuitive for them or not those kind of things also a set of things that one can actually get feedback on um, once one gets the feedback it rate on that along with the developers the design and the user research research team depending upon what stage you get feedback on in the development cycle as the code progresses is it in very early stages or is it towards the very late stage and what the nature of uh, input is is it something which might be a blocker versus not Take all those decision, uh, all those inputs into your decision making, uh, and use the judgment in that regards. In terms of like, what are the things that basically we should address before the MVP release versus what can be the things that can come as fast follow. So again, can't be precise more. Prioritization, uh, having great product sense, comes in very useful. Uh, once all of that. The other key piece also that we do is the complete the internal product reviews. Uh, so for instance, they're making sure that the product meets the compliance standards, the security, privacy, accessibility. There are internal reviews that happen for those, making sure that all of those have been completed before any product launch is done. And then, uh, as I've said before, like working with marketing with respect to the announcement and the press releases becomes super critical. We want to make sure that all the work that the team is doing to solve for the customer pain point, that we ensure that our customers are aware of it. There is enough excitement on the ground that, uh, hey, this is coming. And, um, making sure like increasing awareness uh, within our customers for that.
The last phase is the releasing, uh, which all of us have been waiting for in, from as a PM, releasing uh, the product. But at that point, um, again, like in terms of what the customer feedback is going to be, coming up with like what the feature enhancements as more and more like customers try it out and importantly tracking um, the metrics that we had set for success how is that comparing to our goals and um, making sure uh, we have a good story there and if there isn't one understanding the factors which are making us not meet our goals uh, and what we can do what we can change to make sure uh, that we do meet uh, the goals that we have Switching topics now, the other key piece that is um, a bunch of folks had reached out to me and asked for uh, was how do we switch to product management? So let me share in terms of what my perspective is with regards to that. I think the very first step it starts with is having clarity on your goals. For instance, uh, what kind of PM you want to be? Do you want to be a client-side PM versus a back-end PM? The reason I bring that is because a lot of times there's a question like, am I suited to be a PM? Uh, do my skill sets match? Uh, is that something? What skills I should be looking at, etc. So uh, generally, in my experience, back-end uh, PMs are um, more technical than the client side PMs and generally do have like a CS background uh, versus client side PM. I definitely think it helps having an engineering background. It makes a conversation with engineering uh, easier. One is more comfortable and at ease, but I've noticed client side PMs to have very diverse backgrounds. Um, and so make sure that you tailor um, which kind of PM you're wanting to be to your strengths. The second is also work backwards uh, from your goals. Sometimes I understand like it's very hard to know like down the line like what you want to do but maybe if you can break it down to a five-year map if that's not possible what is your two-year vision for yourself and what is it that you want to achieve are there folks who have similar career paths with similar backgrounds as yours and have transitioned into a product management maybe from their journey you can map out the journey for yourself as to what you want to do so having clarity is uh, basically on your goals is super super critical the second piece is building the skill set um, some of the things that personally for me have been very helpful is having a coding experience and also having an understanding of business. So I would highly recommend take foundational programming and business courses. I think that would really help making sure that when you are speaking to your key partners, you're speaking the same language and have an understanding of what they are doing. Um, so for instance, foundational programming courses, one can actually take courses in Python, C++, C. Um, I think that would be super helpful. If there's an intro to AI course, if that's an area that interests you, I think that would be helpful as well. Um, similarly, in terms of uh, business courses, I would say if there's a course on strategy or entrepreneurship, do take that or if there are particular lab courses if you're an mba student um i would highly encourage like that you take a particular lab course that is available in which there are actually real companies who come in and give projects to work on um the next is also one other avenue can also be within your own company um take a stretch project and help a pm maybe in your day to day uh, interactions you do talk to a pm in your uh, in your interactions like for some instance sometimes i've noticed like folks from marketing uh do interact a lot with pm and maybe that's something you want to be switching into so maybe you can have a uh, conversation with them talk to your manager and see if that is something like you can take on as a stretch project make sure that the current responsibilities that you have you're doing really well in that particular area before you sign up for a stretch project um the second key thing that uh, could be very helpful is having a pm leader as your mentor uh, because folks who are ahead in their career than where uh, you are starting from would have might have a better perspective and can share like their insights, their experiences. Also, if there are opportunities that they know of and uh, think that you might be a great fit for, they might basically recommend you for that or share that with you that, hey, this might be something that might be of interest to you. The second thing, if that's not really possible within your company, uh, try and see if you can do a side project outside your company, for instance. Um, if I've sometimes noticed my friends, they would work for like um, a startup just for a particular project over the weekends, or they might be willing to build something of their own. Those could be things that you are basically interested in. And um, 
and can build the necessary skills uh, which you can basically share in your in your resume uh, in terms of prepping for the interview um, i would suggest like understand the business of the company that you are targeting i think that's super critical what are the different business lines who their customers are um, who are they catering to what your understanding is based on the publicly available information the next is i would highly recommend like practice mock interview with folks who are pms and if possible like a couple of years ahead ahead of you because again they would have perspective and they can share their insights they also will be able to caliber better because they have seen other folks in your situation and can share what your strengths and weaknesses uh, in comparison uh, might be um so that could be something you can try and one of the other things i've noticed sometimes folks are uh, do not like that they wait for the interview to skill and then start prepping um it might work well but uh, i think it might be better if you actually give yourself a little bit of time start preparing before you actually like start interviewing so that sometimes the interview timelines might be actually at a very short notice um maybe in a week or two weeks so make sure you don't uh, sell yourself short prepare beforehand in the last piece is like landing the interview uh, there my advice would be try to get internal referrals if possible i would request like get it from folks who you have worked with before and can speak to your strengths uh, and the reason i say that is because i would my guess would be that a lot of companies have something which is similar uh, to here at microsoft which is when one is internally referring someone they ask like have they worked uh, have you worked with that person um, before where have you worked uh, etc so if there is someone you have worked with and had a great experience with and they can speak really highly of you i think that will go uh, much further along the lines the other thing is also like try to network with folks who have similar backgrounds as yours and have transitioned successfully have a online session with them or have a coffee session with them um one on one and basically just learn about their experiences what tips and tricks that they might have which might actually help you in the situation and then one of the things that i wanted to share from my own personal experience which helped me when i was internally switching within microsoft uh from the strategy role to the product role uh, one of the experiences i had was uh, i had taken part in new product and services lab during booth and um, the experience i gained from that i will quickly share about about it that helped me speak about um my experiences as a product manager that was something i had also tied post So I had taken a project for manufacturing IoT, and it was by a leading tech company who had given that project. And um, what that entailed was there were actually like four phases, as outlined here. Uh, in the very first phase, we tried to understand what are the customer pain points that are that are there. So for that, we interviewed actually eleven customers, came up with the one twenty tertiary needs that they have, and we then bucketed those particular needs into a particular uh, area per se. Then the next one was the second thing we went after was selecting the top needs to solve for. One of the things I would highly recommend is, uh, in general, uh, and that applies also to a PM. It really helps if you have a structured thinking. If there is a particular framework that you can apply, um, so when you're making decisions and make decision based upon facts, um, based upon data, rather than basing it off on what you think might be. might be good so in our case what we did is we looked at the market attractiveness um uh, as for that particular uh area that we had bucketed what the strategic fit to the company would be what is the feasibility of that particular idea and once we had our uh, recommendation in terms of what we think the top needs are we went back to our client and shared that with them and sought their input made some adjustments based upon that in terms of what their insights are and then we had a mutual consensus on what we think are the top needs we need to be solving for once we built that consensus uh went to us like the product ideas so me and my team we conceptualized three product ideas uh in which we basically defined what the problem statement is and had our pitch as to why it is a good idea why customers should be really buying it and then we went ahead and basically had the process of selecting the top idea what that process entailed was uh again as i've said multiple times in the presentation uh we need to get input from folks whom we are building for so as part of the lab course that we had our professor helped us recruit 
a, a, a bunch of folks who can actually like take our survey uh, it matched the persona that we are looking for um, and basically get input on things like for those different uh, ideas that we had three product ideas were conceptualized what is the willingness to pay is it an idea that is innovative or not is there already like uh, many solutions available to it or not so uh, we try to get all of those inputs in there and basically based upon that, but those set of inputs and also it was a mix of both quantitative and qualitative, uh, we basically shamed, uh, shaped our recommendation in terms of uh, what should be the top idea that we should be going after after and we back that up also looking at like the financial projections across the three different ideas that we that we had as to what the financial opportunities what the revenue and profit opportunities for that would be so we modeled that aspect as well and then again like it it is uh it is all like one team big team effort so we sought our input from our client and shared that this is what we are thinking and uh, for our particular project it, it was a success we had alignment with our client in terms of what we came with what we had heard from the uh, customers that this is the idea that we are actually um uh, is worth pursuing and the next step the reason i outlined all of this is because uh it's, it's one thing to like basically um read a lot of information absorb i think that's that's a great starting point but it also helps if there is something that one has done um in in real in actual uh that one can speak to so for me this was uh the particular one of the things that i spoke to in my internal transfer interview uh, but that would be something like find that particular thing for you that you think you'd be uh, proud of sharing uh sharing and and go ahead with that And lastly, uh, but uh, very importantly, thank you for coming and uh, watching this webinar. And if there are any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn, DM me there, or you can email me. And uh, I will try my best to answer as many questions as I can. Thank you, bye.